Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome to our Tuesday Bible study. We're excited that you could connect with us from wherever you're connecting from. Amen. We pray that the Lord's blessing, God's blessing will continue to be upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. So wherever you are, God has been gracious unto us. He's been gracious unto you. He's been gracious unto me. So can we join our hands, lift up our hands, lift up our voices, wherever you are, and let's appreciate God. Let's worship him. Let's bless him. Let's magnify his name. Let's adore him. Let's appreciate him. Let's glorify him. There is no one like our God, the God of Jeshua, who rise in the excellency of his power, mighty in word and mighty in deed. The one that spake and it was done, that commanded and he stood fast, that declared and it was established. The one that has been from everlasting, that will remain even unto the end. We give you glory, Lord. Lift up your voice and bless him. We bless your name. We worship you. We magnify you. We adore you. We thank you, Lord, for how far you brought us, for letting us see a beautiful day, for your faithfulness, for your provision, for your protection. Lift up your voice and give him praise. The psalmist says, bless the Lord, O my soul. Let all that is within me bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who heals, who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. Father, we give you praise. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Lift up your voice and thank him. Thank him for letting you see another beautiful day. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his provision. Thank him for his protection. Thank you for how far he has brought us. Father, we give you praise. Father, we bless you, Lord. Father, we appreciate you. Thank you for your loved ones, for your families, for your homes. Hallelujah. For your business, for your job. For what he has been doing, what he is doing and what he is going to do. Father, we magnify you. Father, we bless your name. Lift up your voice and give him glory and exalt him. He is king of kings and the lord of lords. The one that sets up kings and brings down kings. Who changes the times and the seasons. In him there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. Because from everlasting he has been and to everlasting he will remain. Father, we give you glory. Father, we bless you, Lord. Father, we worship you. Father, we magnify you. Father, we appreciate you. Father, we thank you. Omnipotent, omnipresence, omniscience. Male katoske pradaska. Ligonde zadoske porosidia. Rekonde brashandoske poromosidi. Mala katoske talemasidi. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. Lift up your voice, everyone, and bless his name. And thank him for the privilege of the relationship that we have with him. For the access that we have through the blood of Jesus to come to the throne of grace and ask for help in time of need. Father, we are grateful. Thank you for your love. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that is here with us. Thank you for what you're going to do tonight. Thank you for the lives you're going to touch. Thank you for those you're going to heal. Thank you for those you're going to deliver. Thank you because no one will live here the same way that they came. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you glory. Father, we bless your name. Father, we worship you. Father, we adore you. Father, we appreciate you. We magnify you. Male protosketalia. Rigandes and desketoli. Ragondes keporomojode. In raconde la daskataria. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Can somebody give me a better hallelujah, a better amen? Can you lift up your hands just one more time? And surrender your heart unto him. Say, Father, I surrender my heart unto you. My spirit, my soul, and my body belongs to you. You are my God. You are my maker. You are my creator. You are my redeemer. You are my strong and mighty tower. You are my shield and my buckler. You are my source. You are my strength. You are my song. You are my everything. Lord, I surrender everything unto you. Lift up your voice and surrender. Your aspirations, your goals, your desires, your perplexities, your worries, your doubts, your fears, your anxieties. He says, cast your care upon him because he cares for you. So surrender every care unto him. I promise you before the end of the service, it will become a testimony. Surrender every bill. Yes, Malaga. Surrender every affliction, every burden. Hallelujah. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is rest for your soul tonight as the word of God comes forth. So just surrender everything unto him. Mali das go lay it at the cross. Reconte bragadas. Father, we surrender, Lord, our weaknesses, our failures, our inadequacies, our aspirations and our expectations, our worries. Father, we surrender our weaknesses. We surrender, we repent of our sins, everything we've done, everything we've left undone, individually and collectively. 
have mercy. Cleanse us from every unrighteousness. We invoke the blood of Jesus against every accusation of the enemy, against every yoke, against every spell, against every enchantment, against every incantation. We invoke the blood of Jesus. Against coronavirus, against every attempt of the devil to cause chaos in the world. We invoke the blood of Jesus and we take authority over principalities, over powers, over the rulers of darkness of this world, over spirits of wickedness in high places. We frustrate all the activities of the devil. We pull down all the strongholds of the enemy. We scatter all his works. We bombard all his fortresses and destroy all his processes in the mighty name of Jesus. And we take victory. Lift up your voice and take victory now. In our homes, we take victory. In our lives, we take victory. In our families, we take victory. In the lives of our children and our grandchildren, we take victory. In our communities, we take victory. Against coronavirus, we take victory. Against every assault of the wicked, we take victory. Every day of this month, we take victory. In our jobs, in our businesses, we take victory. Hallelujah. In our careers, we take victory. In our schools, we take victory. Open your mind and take victory. The Bible says that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Open your mind and take victory. The Bible says that you shall have whatsoever you say. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open your mind and take victory. Walk around that room and take victory. Over that situation, take victory. Over that circumstance, take victory. Over that that. Over that plague, take victory. Over that sickness, over that cancer, over that disease, take victory. Over that issue, financial issue, take victory. Makote bradaske poromo zere kete. Li kondeske poromo sheke tere masiri. Li kande gradaska tadi zede. Brogondeske toromo sheke tere masi. La kande rahiri masi ni katoria. We take victory. Makete laske tere. Every day of this month, every day of this year, we take victory. In la boske para masika tani. Li konde bradaske poromo sheke. Kalas katari masi. And we declare that Jesus. Is Lord. Now lift up your voice and declare it that Jesus is Lord. He's Lord over my life. He's Lord over my family. He's Lord over my home. He's Lord over my affairs. He's Lord over my children. He's Lord over my grandchildren. Jesus is Lord. Open your mouth and declare it over my finances, over my health. Jesus is Lord. Male grada. Prodoske paramazidi. Open your mouth and declare it. Jesus is Lord. Over that situation, Jesus is Lord. Over that circumstance, Jesus is Lord. brother, To the glory of the Father, in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can somebody say a louder amen? Can I hear a better amen? Now, can you lift up your hand just one more time and say, Father, speak unto me. Open my understanding to receive your word. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the out of the mouth of the Lord. So open my understanding to receive your word. Father, move by your spirit. Let your word go forth and let it not return void. Let everyone under the sound of my voice be impacted, be changed, be transformed, be healed, be delivered, be enlightened, be strengthened. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Can somebody say a louder amen? Today, we are continuing our series on the end times. This is chronology of the end times, part three. Chronology of the end times, part three. And we are taking our text from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. It says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. 
May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Can somebody say an amen to that? So this is chronology of the end times, part two, or part three rather, part three rather. In part two, we determine that we were going to start our chronology of the end times from the rapture, which is the first phase of a two-phase return of Christ. At the rapture, Jesus is coming to rescue his bride, or rather to receive his bride, the church, that is the, his bride is the church, in the air and take her back to his father's house where he has prepared mansions for her. Jesus talked about that in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. Amen. Then last week, we also went on to describe the characteristics of the rapture and what Christ and the church will be doing in heaven during the seven-year interval between the first phase of Christ's return and the second phase of Christ's return. Of course, in the second phase of Christ's return, he will be coming in all his glory to rescue his brethren, the Jews, from the assault of the Antichrist and set up his kingdom on earth to rule from Jerusalem for a thousand years. So we dealt with some of that, amen, last week, the rapture, amen. So after the rapture, what's next? After the rapture, the next thing that's happening is the revelation and manifestation of the Antichrist. That is coming right after the rapture. The scripture we just read, 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 to 8. It says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Who is he that restrains now? He said, The spirit of the Antichrist is already working, it's already all over the place. But there is somebody limiting or restraining the Antichrist from overrunning the earth, from coming to rule, amen, like he intends to rule. And that person is the Holy Spirit walking through the church. Amen. So he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. And then, only then, the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his nostrils, the breath of his mouth, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Once the rapture takes place, the stage is set for the revelation and the manifestation of the Antichrist. I pray you will not be here when that takes place. In Jesus' name. So how will the Antichrist be revealed? How will he be revealed? Well, we have dealt extensively on how to identify the Antichrist in our previous teaching that we titled Unmasking the Antichrist. I think that is in two parts, part one and part two. So if you were not, if you were not in those teachings, I will encourage you to listen to them again on our YouTube and Facebook channels, amen, and watch them again. But some of the, some of the identifying attributes of the Antichrist we listed in that teaching include the following. Number one, the Antichrist will be a man and not a woman. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3, Daniel 8 verse 23. Number two, he will be a European Gentile, either born or a naturalized citizen of the European nations. That's Daniel chapter 9, verse 26, Daniel chapter 7, verse 7 to 8, and Daniel, and, and Daniel chapter 7, verses 19 to 26. Number three, the Antichrist, will be, the Antichrist will be extremely impressive and attractive. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 20. Number four, the Antichrist will be extremely boastful and braggadocious. That's Revelation chapter 13, verse 5, and Daniel chapter 7, verses 20 and 25. Number five, he will be obscenely and blasphemously proud. That's Daniel 11, 36 to 38. Number six, the Antichrist will have oratorial skills that are second to none. That's Revelation chapter 13 and verse two. Number seven, he will be super intelligent, brilliant, and ultra smart according to the wisdom of the world. That's Daniel chapter eight and verse 23. Number eight, he will have a near death experience from which he will recover miraculously as if he rose from the dead in some kind of counterfeit re resurrection. Amen. That's Revelation chapter 13 and verse 3. Number 9. He will be extremely deceitful and cunning. That's Daniel chapter 8 and verse 25. 
Number 10, he will rise to power through political manipulations and intrigues. That's Daniel 11 and verse 21. Number 11, he will not be attracted to woman, women. That's Daniel chapter 11 and verse 37. And number 12, he will attempt to change moral and natural laws of the universe. That's Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. And then number 13, the number of his name will be 666. That's Revelation 13, 17, and 18. This is Bible study. So I expect that you have your notes and you're taking down all these scriptures. Amen. So that you can go search them. So you can go search them. I don't have time to read them. Can somebody say an amen to that? Why those are identifying attributes or marks that you can use to recognize the Antichrist? There is one singular event, one singular event that will reveal the Antichrist. One singular event, amen, that when that event takes place, he will be the architect of that event. And when that event takes place, amen, he will be leading that event. And when that event takes place, you will know that this is the Antichrist. He may have been rising through the ranks, amen, amen, and, and, and become powerful, amen, and may, you may not recognize that this is the Antichrist because he's probably going to appear like every other person. If you're probably not following his story, if you're probably not, um, not, 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 not um, very knowledgeable about the word, amen. But there's one event that if you're here when it happens, you have missed the rapture. But that event will identify that this is the Antichrist. He will be the architect of that event for which he will get a lot of credit, amen. And what is that event? The event is in Daniel chapter 9 and verse 27. Then he shall confirm, Daniel 9 and verse 27, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. Then he shall convert a covenant for, with many for one week. What I believe that event is from this scripture is that he will bring peace to the Palestinian-Israeli Middle East conflict. He's going to draw up the agreement that all the various parties to this conflict will sign. And for one week, he will guarantee peace. He will guarantee peace. So look at that scripture again, Daniel 9, 27. It says, then he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. But in the middle of the week, he shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abominations shall be one that, which, who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. Amen. So he will bring peace to the Palestinian, Israeli, Middle East conflict. That has been, that peace agreement that he's going to bring will be for seven years. They will sign an agreement for seven years. Amen. With Israel, with Palestine, with all the parties involved in that conflict. Now, if you don't know about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, go check the news, go check history. The Palestinian-Israeli the Palestinian, Palestinian -Israeli conflict is the singular issue that has divided the nations of the world into two camps. Those, who, those that support Israel and those that are against Israel. Those that support Israel and those that are against, against Israel. This conflict is the root of all radical Islamist jihadist terrorism. This conflict is the root of all radical Islamist jihadist terrorism that has swept through the world since 1948. All of them can be traced to this Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It is a continuation and reflection of the conflict between Ishmael and Isaac, the two sons of Abraham, between the son of the bondwoman and the son of promise, between Hagar and Sarah, between Mount Sinai and Calvary, and between the flesh and the spirit. The Lord will open your eyes to understand that. But read Galatians chapter 4, verses 21 to 31. It will help you with that. Can somebody say amen to that? Man, now, this agreement is going to be a major achievement because for a long time, the world has been trying to find a resolution since 1948 to that conflict. Many wars have been fought concerning that. And several nations have aligned themselves they have aligned themselves in relation to that conflict. Amen. Till today, that conflict still affects American politics, affects everything 
that is done in Europe, in America, and in several of all these places. So it's a very serious conflict. But the peace agreement that will be signed in this conflict, that the, 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 the Antichrist, will, the peace agreement that he will bring will allow for the temple to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. It will allow for the temple in to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. Amen. Jerusalem, of course, is now the capital of Israel. There was a lot of problem with recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Amen. Because Jerusalem is considered an international city. But, amen. but this conflict or this peace agreement will allow for the temple to be rebuilt in Jerusalem. Right now, where the temple used to be, amen, the place is called the Temple Mount, amen? And what you have there is the Western Wall, which was um, an expansion of the temple by, by, by King Herod, and two mosques, I think the Dome of the Rock and one other mosque. That's what you have where the Temple Mount used to be, where Solomon's Temple used to be. These are the things that, that, were, that are there now. Of course, we know Solomon's Temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, amen, and um, the Babylonians. And then, of course, the, the next temple that was built, amen, which is the temple where Jesus worshipped, was destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. So that space, that land space, they are called the Temple Mount, which is where the temple, which is where the temple used to be. There are, there are other structures there. But the peace agreement will allow the temple to be rebuilt. It will allow the temple to be rebuilt. And not only the temple will they allow the temple to be rebuilt, once the temple is completed, the Jews will be allowed to resume the daily sacrifices and ordinances of the temple, which have been suspended since the destruction of the temple in AD 70. Those daily offerings and daily sacrifices that are specified in the law of Moses that they have to be doing, they've been suspended because the, 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 the Israelites, the Jews, are not permitted to sacrifice anywhere but at the temple. So once the temple was destroyed in AD 70, those sacrifices were suspended. But they will be, they will be restored. They will, be, they will resume those sacrifices. Okay? And that's what the scripture was talking about. Amen? That those sacrifices are the ones that the Antichrist will come and interrupt. Amen? It says in the middle of the seven years, in the middle of the seven years, the Antichrist will break the agreement. This peace agreement in the middle of the 70, seven years, that's three and a half years into the peace agreement, he will break the agreement. He will invade Jerusalem and put an end to the daily sac sacrifices. He will put an end to the daily sacrifices. He will enter the temple and desecrate it. How he will do that, I don't really know, but there are speculations. Maybe he will offer a pig, you know, on the temple. Amen. And then, of course, he will walk into the Holy of Holies and put his image there. Amen. Put his image there as the object to be worshipped. And then, of course, as, as Paul said in Thessalonians, in, in the scripture we read in the text, in Thessalonians, he will sit in the temple, amen, and demand worship as God. As demand worship. Let's take a look at what the, what the scripture said about that. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 4. It says, Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the foreign away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, all that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's what he's going to do. He's going to sit in the temple that has been reconstructed, amen, and demand worship from the Jews. This is what the Bible calls the abomination that causes desolation. The abomination that causes desolation. Jesus talked about it in Matthew 24, verse 15 to 17. He says, therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, that's in the holy of holies, so that means there's going to be, the abomination is going to be maybe an image of himself in the Holy of Holies. Amen. Demanding worship. He said, when you see that abomination, you know, standing in the holy place, say, whoever is, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea feel, flee to the mountains. And let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his 
house. So, so Jesus was talking about the signs of the end times. And he was talking to the Jews. He said, when you see that abomination in the temple, that abomination that causes desolation that Daniel talked about, that Daniel referred to in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, when you see that, he says then, the great tribulation has started. In that case, run for your life. Run when you see that for your life. That's why he says, if you're on the rooftop, don't go down to take whatever you need to take. Run when you see that. Because when that happens, the Antichrist will wage war on the Jewish people. He's going to demand worship, and of course, the Jewish people will revolt. Then he will wage war on them and begin to slaughter the Jewish people. Demand that they take the mark of the beast. Demand that they take his mark. Demand that they worship him. And he will gather the armies of the world to wage war against Israel. And of course, the Bible says he'll be winning. The Bible says he'll be winning. So, so Jesus, Jesus referenced this, you know, and then of course there'll be intense persecution. From this point on, the great tribulation begins. Amen. Now, the war that the Antichrist will wage against the, the Jewish people will turn into a global war. They will be massively persecuted massively killed, the Holocaust will seem like nothing to what the Antichrist will do to the Jewish people. Amen. And then of course that will drive the Jewish people into prayer, to seek to pray and ask God to send the Messiah, to send the Messiah, to send the Messiah. Remember the last time that he came, they didn't recognize that he was the Messiah. They will pray, they send the Messiah. That is when Jesus will now come back in glory and his power with his army that is those of us that have been raptured with him will come back with him as the army of armies of heaven to come and deliver the jewish people from this onslaught of the antichrist and destroy the antichrist look at it in daniel chapter 7 verse 21 and 22 daniel 7 21 and 22 he says i was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the ancient of days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High and the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. This is the things that are going to happen between when the Antichrist reveals himself and the second coming or the second phase of the second coming of Christ. We're going to deal with that second phase in the next teaching, maybe in part four. But for now, amen. Look at the points that I want to I want to I want to send across. Amen. Amen. The singular event that will reveal the Antichrist is this: he will bring peace to the Palestinian Israeli Middle East conflict. That's number one. Number two, the revelation that will that's the uh, that's the that's the event that will reveal the Antichrist. Number two, the revelation or manifestation of the Antichrist marks the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel. Remember Daniel's prophecy, 70 weeks? Okay. We have traced in the previous teaching that 69 of those weeks have been fulfilled. So what is remaining is that last one week and is week of years, not week of days, week of years. 483 years of that prophecy of the prophetic destiny of Israel as shown, as revealed to Daniel, amen, in Daniel chapter 9, has been fulfilled. That remaining seven years is yet to be fulfilled. When the Antichrist, the manifestation and revelation of the Antichrist will mark the beginning of the fulfillment of that remaining seven years. That is the very last one week of years yet to be fulfilled in Daniel 70 weeks. Daniel chapter 9, 20 to 27. You can go check it or read our other, or sorry, or listen to our other teachings on our prophetic teaching, our teaching on Daniel 70 weeks. Amen. Number two, or number three, the revelation or, or manifestation of the Antichrist also marks the beginning of the global reign of the Antichrist and the establishment of the one world government and the one world religion. The revelation or manifestation of the Antichrist also marks the beginning of the global reign of the Antichrist and the establishment of the one world government and the one world religion. This is the fifth kingdom. This is the fifth kingdom represented by the feet 
and toes of iron and clay that do not mix in the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream in Daniel chapter 2, verses 41 to 45. Amen. When we talked, we talked about this fifth kingdom that's going to come. Amen. That's represented by the feet of that image, the feet and toes of that image, but it's made up of iron and clay. Amen. They don't, they mingle, but they don't really, really mix. And the Bible said, and, the, and in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, it was in that time, in the reign of that kingdom, that Jesus will come and destroy. A stone is cut out without human hands that hits that, that, that comes against that feet and destroys the entire image. And that stone grows into a mountain that fills the earth. And that kingdom will never, ever, ever be destroyed. So, this revelation or manifestation of the Antichrist marks the beginning of the global reign of the Antichrist and the establishment of the one world government and the one world religion. This is that fifth kingdom and the last on the earth before the kingdom of Christ or the kingdom of God really, really takes over. Now, the fourth thing, the point I want you to note is that the manifestation of the Antichrist also marks the beginning of the tribulation period. Also marks the beginning of the tribulation period. We have the tribulation period and we have the great tribulation period. Now, the tribulation period has been called all kinds of names. The time of Jacob's trouble, the time of God's wrath, the day of the Lord. If you see the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord, he's talking about that. The day of vengeance, he's talking about that. Amen, about this tribulation period. Matthew 24, 21 to 22. Amen. It says, for then there will be great tribulation such as has not been seen, such as has not been since the beginning of the world, until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved. But for the elect's sake, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. For the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. So, so the manifestation of the Antichrist also marks the beginning of the tribulation period. And that tribulation period will be for seven years that the Antichrist will reign. Of course, like we saw earlier, in the middle of that, he will, he will break the agreement and will move into what we call the Great Tribulation Period. Amen. We'll talk some more about that as we go. So, I want to quickly pick up, point out certain characteristics, amen, of the reign of the Antichrist and the Tribulation Period. The certain characteristics of the reign of the Antichrist and the Tribulation Period. That is some things that will be happening, amen, during that period. Amen. Now, I want you to note, if you're a Bible student, that all the events, and for some of you, I know you've had difficulty in studying the book of Revelation, but know that all the events enumerated in Revelation chapter 4 to chapter 19, chapters 4 to chapter 19, that happened on the earth, are all situated in this seven-year period. All the events, the seal judgments, the bowl judgments, the tribulation, and the, the trumpet judgment, all the events, all the things are situated in this seven year period. So when you're reading Revelation chapters 4 to chapters 19, understand that all those things are situated in this seven year period. So, what are the characteristics of the reign of the Antichrist <clears throat> and the tribulation period? Number one. Number one characteristic is there will be a one world government headed by the Antichrist. It will be a one world government headed by the Antichrist. Amen. Revelation 13 and verse 7, it says, It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And authority was given him over every tribe, every tongue, and nation. So there will be a one world government headed by the Antichrist. That government will rule for seven years before it is totally dismantled. You know, think about it, you know. Jesus started his ministry for, for, at the age 30. And, um, and the ministry was for the three and a half years. And when the Antichrist is going to have his own ministry for seven years, double the time that Jesus had his own ministry. Think about that. Amen. So, there will be one more government headed by the Antichrist. Then number two, there will be a one world religion led by the prophet of the Antichrist or the false prophet of the Antichrist. 
and the object of worship shall be the Antichrist. There will be a one world religion led by the prophet of the Antichrist or the false prophet of the Antichrist and the object of worship shall be the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 13 and verse 11. He says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spoke like a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly, hand, whose deadly wound was healed. Whose deadly wound was healed. Amen. So there will be a one world religion, amen, led by the prophet or the false prophet of the Antichrist. He is the one that will exercise, he will exercise the authority of the, of the first beast of the Antichrist, amen, and cause the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the Antichrist whose deadly wound was healed. Amen. So one, there will be a one world government. Two, there will be a one world religion. You can see all the infrastructure being set up for a one world government. You can see all the, all the things, amen, being set up for a one world religion. All the talk about ecumenism and all that, they are all preparing the ground for that. All the, top of, all the inclusive movement, movements are all preparing the ground for that one world government. Can somebody say an amen to that? Amen. Number three, there will be a global economy where no one is permitted to buy or sell unless they can show evidence that they are worshippers of the Antichrist. There will be a global economy where no one is permitted to buy or sell unless they can show evidence that they are worshippers of the Antichrist by having the mark, the name, or number of the name of the beast or, the, or of the Antichrist on their right hand or on their forehead. There will be a global economy where no one is permitted to buy or sell unless they can show evidence that they are worshippers of the Antichrist by having the mark, the name, or number of the name of the beast on their right hand or on their forehead. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. It says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his names. Of course, there are there are there are there are speculations by so many scholars that the mark may be a kind of digital chip or digital implant that could be implanted, a digital implant in humans for this purpose. There are all those kinds of um, speculations. But one thing I want you to know is that the technology to accomplish that is already in place today. That shows you how close we are to the end. The technology to accomplish that is already in place today. Implanting of chips in humans and animals, in fact, implanting of chips in animals have been going on to identify them, to track them, and all kinds of things. In birds, in whales, has been going on to identify them, to track them, and so many other things. Amen. Implanting of chips in, in human, digital chips in human, the technology is already available. So that shows you how close we are to the end. It's already available. When we read some of these things many, many years ago, amen, 30, 40 years ago, we used to wonder how it would happen. But now we know how, because we can see the technology is already in place. And without that technology, nobody will buy or sell. Now, I want to just say something here. The technology itself is not bad. It is the use of the technology for whatever purpose it is that is bad. The Antichrist is going to use that technology. But that doesn't make the technology to be bad. That technology is being used for good purposes today. But of course, the Antichrist is going to use that technology to control and to rule. Can somebody say an amen to that? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, number four. Those that refuse to worship the Antichrist will be persecuted. Those that will refuse to worship the Antichrist will be persecuted and killed. A lot of them by beheading. Anyone that refused to worship him will be persecuted or killed. A lot of them by beheading. Amen. Um, Revelation chapter 19 and verse 15. He says, He was granted power to give bread to the image of the beast, 
that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should, be both, should both speak and cause as many as will not worship the image of the beast to be killed. Anyone that will not worship the Antichrist will be persecuted and killed, mostly by beheading. Number five, those that are beheaded for refusing to worship the Antichrist for the sake of Christ, Jesus, shall reign with Christ in the millennial realm. A lot of people will be martyred then. A lot of people, probably some people that have listened to this teaching and all that, amen, will, will, that, that probably will see a teaching like this, amen, and recognize that, wow, we have missed the rapture. Canal Christians and all that, they will be martyred. Especially if they decide that they are not going to take the mark of the beast, that they are not going to worship, his, uh, worship the beast, they will be martyred. Life will be unbearable for them. And most of them will be killed, mostly by beheading. But those of them that are so killed for resisting the Antichrist, for the sake of Christ, for the sake of their belief in Christ, for the sake of their recognizing that this is the Antichrist and I'm not going to worship him, those of them that will be so killed will make it to heaven. They will reign with Christ. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4 talked about that. It says, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So those carnal Christians, backsliding Christians, lackadaisical Christians, one leg in, one leg out people, amen, churchgoers but have not been regenerated, that missed the rapture, amen, but are aware of these teachings that probably enter into the tribulation period. They, if they now choose not to worship the Antichrist and to resist the Antichrist, amen, because of their understanding that this is the Antichrist, and they don't want to worship him, and then they seek after Jesus Christ, they will be killed. And in them being killed, they will make it to heaven and reign with Christ a thousand years. Can somebody say an amen to that? Number six characteristics. During the seven years of the Antichrist reign, God will pour out judgments, rot, calamities, earthquakes, plagues, famine, disasters, and so on upon the earth and its inhabitants. During the seven year reign, there will be judgment. That's why that period is time called the tribulation period, the day of vengeance of the Lord. It's the tribulation period, it's the day, time of Jacob's trouble, it's the day of the Lord, it's the day of wrath. It has all kinds of names, amen, in, that it is called in scripture. Amen. So God will be pouring out judgments on the earth. Calam there will be calamities, there will be catastrophes, there will be earthquakes, there will be plagues, there will be famine, there will be disasters and so on, upon the earth, and its inhabitants. So of these judgments include, you can go study it in the book of Revelation, the seven seal judgments, that you find them from Revelation 6, verses 1, to Revelation 8, verses 5. The seven trumpet judgments, from Revelation 8, verses 7, to Revelation 11, verse 19. And the seven bowl judgments, from Revelation 15, verses 1, to Revelation 16, verse 21. All these will be judgments. In fact, according to Dr. Tim Lahaye, this is what he said. He said, the reason the tribulation will be a holocaust of major proportions is because it combines the wrath of God, the fury of Satan, and the evil nature of man run wild. He says, the reason the tribulation will be a holocaust of major proportions is because it combines the wrath of God, the fury of Satan, and the evil nature of man run wild. The horror and terror of the tribulation period cannot be imagined. Jesus said it will be so horrific. It will be so horrific that, in fact, Jesus said it will be so horrific that unless those days were shortened, no flesh will be saved. But for the sake, but for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The elect are the Jewish people. Remember, he said, for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Can somebody say amen to that? Number seven. 
When the Antichrist breaks the agreement in the middle of the seven years and begins to wage war against the Jews, that will drive them to prayer, I said that earlier, to cry to God for the promise of the Messiah. Remember, he came before and they did not recognize him because he did not come as the conquering king, but as the suffering savior. So they did not recognize him. Amen. And so it would drive them to prayer. That was what Zechariah talked about in Zechariah chapter 12 and verse 10. He says, and I'll pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will mourn for, me, for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. So that persecution would drive them to seek the Lord and pray for the coming of the Antichrist. Number nine, in answer to their prayers, the Messiah will now come. In all his glory and power, with all his saints, as the army of heaven, in the second phase of his coming, at the end of the seven years of tribulation, to wage war on the Antichrist and his armies and deliver Israel. Revelation 19, 11 to 16 captured that. He said, now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white house, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it, he should strike the nations. And he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Revelation chapter 19, verses 19 to 21, captures what he will do with the beast. He says, And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the beds were filled with their flesh. Can somebody say an amen? To that. So in answer to their prayers, Messiah will come. The conquering king will come. Jesus will come with all his army. Those of us that have been raptured will be coming back with him. Amen. To wage war on the Antichrist. The Antichrist will gather the nations of the world to wage war against Christ. Amen. And Christ will defeat the Antichrist. Amen. Him and his false prophets and his agents will be cast into the lake of fire alive. Jesus will deliver his brethren, the Jews, from the oppression of the Antichrist. And the Jews will now recognize him. They will now recognize him and say, wow, this is our Messiah. That's when he will be crowned and recognized as the Messiah of the Jewish people. And the Messiah for every one of us. King of kings and Lord of lords. Can somebody shout an amen to that? Hallelujah. The chronology continues next week when I'm going to talk about the actual second coming and some of the characteristics of those second coming. Amen. And the transition from there into the millennial reign. Amen. And hopefully, if time permits, I will go all the way to the white throne judgment. Amen. And there are some very important things you want to know that I'm going to be talking about next week. But for now, lift up your hands and give God praise. Thank you for the word that you have heard. Thank him for the word that you have heard. Hallelujah. Thank him for the word that you have heard. Amen. Thank you for the word that you have heard. Hallelujah. Thank him for the grace. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his love. Amen. The question I want to ask is that, are you ready for the rapture? Jesus can come any day now. Everything is set. Are you ready for the rapture? If you miss the rapture, you end up in the tribulation period. Amen. In the horror and terror of the tribulation period. 
Are you ready for the rapture? If Jesus comes today, are you sure you will make the rapture? If Jesus comes today, are you sure you will be raptured? If you are not sure, you can be sure today. Amen. You can be sure today. Can I pray with you? Maybe you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus for the first time. Or maybe you were backslidden and you want to rededicate yourself unto the Lord. Or maybe you have given your life to Jesus, but you are loaded with all kinds of carnality, bound by all kinds of addictions, bound by all kinds of oppressions. Can you lift up your hands and let me pray with you? Lift up your hands unto the Lord. Amen. And say with all your heart. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I need you to save me. I believe you died for me. And you rose up on the third day that I may be justified. Today, Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Be my Lord and my Savior. From today, I will serve you. Unto the end. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. If you pray that prayer with all your heart, we believe you got born again, be connected to the Bible believing church or join, you can join our online church, no matter where you are from the world. Amen. And be planted. Those that are planted, they shall flourish. Amen. I pray that the grace that has brought you, that grace will preserve you until the end in Jesus' name. And if you're here rededicating your life to Jesus, lift up your hands. Amen. And just rededicate your life. And tell him, Father, I'm coming back home. Just like the prodigal son. I messed up and I'm coming back home. And if you're bound by any addiction or whatever is hindering you from living your Christian life the way you ought to live it, in the name of Jesus, that addiction is broken. In Jesus' name. Whatever oppressive spirit is oppressing you today, I take authority over that power. I break his grip and his hold upon your life. In the name of Jesus. And I set you free. In Jesus' name. Can somebody say an amen? Can somebody say an amen? Hallelujah. Now, for those of you that are born again, amen. Are you working for the Lord? You know, Matthew chapter 24, verse 45 to 46. Jesus said, who is then, who then is the faithful and wise servant? whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season. Blessed, blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Are you faithful in the work of your master? Lift up your voice and let me pray with you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the revelation of your word, empower me to be steadfast and unmovable in my stewardship, so as to remain under the blessing and not miss my rewards. Pray it again. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the revelation of your word, empower me to be steadfast and unmovable in my sea worship, so as to remain under the blessing and not miss my rewards. In Jesus' name we pray. Now lift up your hands and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the revelation of your word, empower me to be steadfast and unmovable in my stewardship so as not to remain under the, so, so as to remain under the blessings and not miss my reward. Father, in the name of Jesus, by the revelation of your word, empower me, give me the grace to be steadfast and unmovable in my stewardship, in my serving of you. So I can so that I will remain under the blessing and not miss my rewards. La cote bradas que talize de Mandeles que poro mojandos que tore Bragandos que toro mosiri gatele Ricate bragas que pramagadare Lis que poro mosiri gatele Father in the name of Jesus By the revelation of your word Empower me to be steadfast and unmovable In my still worship So as to remain under the blessing And not miss my rewards In Jesus name We have prayed Can somebody say a louder amen Hallelujah now, whatever issues you came here with, whatever issues you came here with, Le Kote Radaske, whatever issues you came here with, I want you to know that they are being turned into his testimony right now in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and talk to him about that issue. 
Talk to him about that thing you came here with. Talk to him. Talk to him about it. Whatever that issue is, whatever that issue is, you need a new job, you need a breakthrough, open doors, healing in your body, healing your soul, reconciliation with your husband. Your marital destiny transformed. In the name of Jesus, I come into agreement with you concerning that issue, and I declare it done in Jesus' name. I declare it done in Jesus' name. I declare it done in Jesus' name. Every negative circle in your life terminates today in the name of Jesus. Every verdict of untimely death upon your life is reversed today in the name of Jesus. Every gang up of the spirit against you that is subverting your progress today, that gang up is terminated in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and give God thanks. Father, we give you praise. Father, we bless your name. Father, we worship you. Thank him for the answers to prayers. Thank you for the miracles. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for the word. Thank him. La Kote Lada. We give you glory, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can somebody say louder, amen? Hallelujah. I hope you've been blessed today, amen. Join us on our Friday service. It's going to be awesome, amen. It's going to be very powerful Friday service, Friday healing and deliverance service. That's the service that we minister to you. We minister to you. We're going to do in a lot more praying. Not a whole lot of teaching, not as much teaching, but a lot more praying, a lot more impartation of the word, a lot more ministration, a lot more declarations, brutal declarations on our Friday services. So come, invite the sick, invite those that are oppressed, invite those that, are, that need help, healing, need deliverance in one form or the other, and let them join. It's a prophetic service, it's one hour of power that is coming to you on Friday service. And then on Sunday, it's going to be an amazing and explosive service in Jesus' name. I think we're going to have an anointing service. It's going to be explosive. Be part of it and be prepared for it. In Jesus' name. Thank you for letting us come into your home. Lift up your hands for the blessing. The Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. Send you help from the sanctuary. And strengthen you out of Zion. The Lord remember all your offerings. And accept your bond sacrifice, Selah. The Lord grant you according to your heart's desire. And fulfill all your counsel. We will rejoice in your salvation. And in the name of our God, we set up our banners. The Lord answer all your prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can you lift up your hands one more time for the blessing? The Lord bless you and keep you. Lift up his countenance over you and be gracious unto you. Cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Make you a thousand times greater than your dreams and a thousand times better than you think and a thousand times wiser than everyone thinks, and a thousand times richer in every good and gracious thing. The Lord make a thousand times healthier in your spirit, your soul, and your body, and a thousand times happier every day of your life. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear a better amen? Let's share the grace in fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, bless and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Remember to reach out to us with your prayer points, with even your questions on all our contact points. Amen. And if this service is a blessing to you, please let us know. The Lord bless you mightily. Thank you for letting us come into your home. In Jesus' name. Go and come back with your testimonies. In Jesus' name. Amen.